Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Randy Dameron with the West Virginia Department of Transportation. Really glad you're here today. The, uh, you're going to hear from Secretary Riston and also Commander Mayhorn from the Madison VFW, as along with a couple of other special guests we have with us today. But the reason we're here, well, first off, the reason we're here, Secretary Riston likes getting out and meeting constituents across the state. So he's going to be here after two to meet you and, uh, and, and talk highways and talk roads. But ladies and gentlemen, we wouldn't be here today if it had not been for Roads to Prosperity. This bridge was built with Roads to Prosperity money. Let me tell you a little story. I think you'll find it interesting. When Governor Justice was first elected, I wasn't in the room, but the story goes, he came to highways and he said, I want the roads fixed. They're, they're in bad shape. I want them improved. We have some big projects that need to be done. And the answer was, sir, we'd love to do that, but we only money. And the governor said, I wasn't there, but the story goes, the governor said, I'll take care of that. Thus, he went on the road, and 72% of the public voted in favor of the bonds to give us roads to prosperity. And again, that's why we're here today. Also, we want to honor the Medal of Honor recipient, which we'll do here in just a few minutes with the Veterans of Foreign Wars in the Madison Post, number 5578. So, with that said, I'd like to introduce the Secretary of Transportation, as well as he doubles as the Commissioner of the Division of Highways. This is Jimmy Riston. Thank you, Randy. I'm really pleased to be down here in Boone County today. Uh, it's just a shame the governor wasn't able to join us, but uh, he, he's up there working hard for us, trying to get us a tax cut through, through the process. So uh, y'all hang in there with it. We're going to get something really great happen here now that we're uh, starting to pull people together up there. I know a little bit about pulling people together. I'd like to point your attention to all these folks over right over here, wearing these, wearing these work clothes. Uh, this is the best bargain in the state of West Virginia, let me tell you, and these guys are part of it. These, this is your division of highways. This is the Department of Transportation. These are the folks that make things like today happen. Yes, the governor brought forth a great vision with the Roads to Prosperity. This program saved our state. We were upside down. $500 million in debt. I mean, we were done. The division of highways was sinking fast. We were literally planning the decline of our roadway system. And the decades and decades of underinvestment on our roads was showing up in every road you passed, every road you tried to drive on. That's not the case today. Now, have, have we done all the work we need to do? Absolutely not. But boy, we've done a bunch. We've done a bunch with nearly $4 billion in this governor's term of Roads to Prosperity funding. Nearly $4 billion, $3.93 billion with the total package of the Roads to Prosperity program. That not only got us these big, regionally significant projects, that got us projects that are important to you right here locally, like this wonderful bridge that you're looking at behind me. This is what the Roads to Prosperity, this was the vision that the governor, governor envisioned directly funding big regionally fund, big regionally significant projects but to get right down to the projects right here in Boone County projects like this bridge it also freed up money it freed up money that that we would have normally had to put toward those saving saving it up nickel and dime at a time to work on those big projects or bridge like this but it freed up those dollars for these guys to do what they do best we are a maintenance organization in the Division of Highways. That's what we do. That's what we do better than anybody in the country. I don't say that because it's rhetoric, but West Virginia Department of Transportation is the best in the country because of folks just like this right here. And we're the best in every area. We, we, don't, get, we don't get that number one spot so much. You've heard the governor talk about being 50th. We're not 50th in a whole lot of categories anymore. You've got the best Department of Transportation. Number one, number one. We have the best people in the country, and every one of y'all are some of those. I, I see some of the best engineers in the country right here that worked on designing this bridge. Our, our great contractor, a West Virginia company right up there in St. Albans, Triton Construction. This, this is exactly what the governor envisioned. We've come a long way. 
we have a lot of work left to do. We, make no mistake about it, we really do. The governor put us on a path. We're executing our plan along that path, and we're going to continue to do that until we do what we, until we, do what we say we're going to do. We're going to provide us with a world-class, safe, efficient, modern transportation system at every aspect. We've implemented a one transportation department. Our new multimodal agency works hand in hand with highways to do things like airports, bus transit projects, aeronautics. This is who we are. We're one DOT and we're working together. We're working hand in hand. The governor's put a team together in his cabinet. We're working with those other agencies. Where one comes up short somewhere, there's two more waiting to lend a hand to, to do something. Some of you've mentioned some economic development projects with me today. Some of you've mentioned a few pilot projects and said some highway projects that could tie into tourism. That's who we are today. This is, this is the government that the, West, that the governor has brought to the people that, and that's why, that's why we overwhelmingly supported the Roads to Prosperity Project, because we understood him. He talked a language we could hear, a language we could understand, and now we see the results, and they're exactly what we said they're going to be, and they're exactly what you expected. But we're going to keep working. We're working through a lot of issues with our federal aid program, and we're going to continue to do that. It's a big, bold investment. We're going to see some results of that. It's going to have a long-lasting impact. But make no mistake. That's not the answer to all, all of our issues either. We had decades and decades, decades of underinvestment in our roads and bridges and our infrastructure. What we have is a federal program that is not the silver bullet, the end all, end all, but what it is, it's a very impressive down payment. And we got to keep that momentum moving through as we go through these different cycles, just like my guys are working through different maintenance cycles. They've completed one maintenance cycle on all the roads in West Virginia. One maintenance cycle. That means, that means every road in West Virginia has had some work on it of some description. The core maintenance plan, the idea that we are working on the things that deteriorate the roadway. We've got to get that water away from the road. The ditching, the pothole repairs and the patching, the canopy cutting that they are so proud of, so proud of because this is working. That lets that sunlight get to, the, get to that pavement, go through a couple of wet dry cycles. It's just fantastic. These guys are going to keep working for you because you know what? They're one of you. They live with you, they play with you, they go to the same stores. Their families drive on these roads too. You want to see passion? For, some, for what's, what people do for a living, talk to these guys. Talk to these guys. They, ha, they care about what these roads look like because they're their roads. Their families, their wives, their daughters, their husbands, they drive on these roads and bridges too. Today, I am particularly honored to be, to be, dedicating, to be dedicating this bridge. This, this bridge, this one means a lot. You see, you see a, lot of our, a lot of our folks, but Many times, you know, once again, West Virginia's first. We are first in the nation per capita for, for military service. And even though it's been many, many years that Lieutenant Kyle gave, gave his, 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 his life to protect what we have today, our right to literally come together here today with nobody controlling what we say or what we do, we, we can literally congregate today or today because of men just like this. I'm, I'm going to uh, allow the, uh, the VFW folks and some of the other folks to tell you, to tell you the story of, of Lieutenant Darwin Kyle, but this means a lot and it, it, it's, it's overdue, it's too long. Uh, it, it's many times, it's way too long before we honor these folks and we're gonna do that today. Before I step aside and hand it off to someone, I'm going to tell you about some things that we're, other things that we're doing in Boone County just, to, just because I have an opportunity here and I'm, I'm really thankful to be able to get out amongst you and talk to you a little bit, uh, particularly during the legislative session, they run you pretty ragged up there. But uh, this, this means a lot to me. This, this is who I am. You know, the, the, sitting in that office at that, with that pile of paperwork is one thing. But at heart, I'd rather be out here with these guys pulling ditches or building a pile wall and absolutely working on a bridge. Uh, I'm a bridge engineer by nature, by trade. Heck, I was born to be a bridge engineer. So that's my first love. But uh, we, we actually have some projects going along over on County Route 5 at Williams Mountain. Uh, they're going to begin a slip repair over there next week. 
We've got culvert replacements over at Covert Branch and Gerald's Branch coming up. Ditching all over this county. The focus is coming, you know. Uh, these, these guys, I, I gave them a challenge a couple of years ago. I've asked them by Memorial Day, get all the potholes repaired. Get all those potholes repaired. We, the citizens, cannot stand running in those potholes and, take, and having, having the, the expense and the aggravation of having our tires busted and our uh, front ends aligned. They've answered the call. They've answered the call. They're going to answer it again this year. And what you're seeing is, is that our plan is working because there'll be less pothole repairs this year than there was last year. So what I promised you guys is that you're seeing it with your own eyes. It's a hard, hard job. The better we get at it, the easier it'll get. That's what's going to happen. That's exactly what happened last year. We, we used less tons of asphalt last year to take care of it. We're going to lose less this year. But we'll use what it takes, no, make no doubt about it. They've done, they've done quite a bit of coal patching. I don't like coal patching any more than you guys do. Matter of fact, I hate it. I hate it. If I could have an asphalt plant that would give me hot mix all year long, we would not even attempt to use pothole or coal patch. The coal patching material, it, it, it's a temporary fix. It's a Band-Aid. That's exactly what it is. I hope you understand. But we have to do that because you're going to get these wheel busters out there during the wintertime when these asphalt plants aren't open, and we have to do something. And that's something we do, and we do it willingly. Uh, we're always looking for better technology. And this district, District 1, who Boone County is a part of, we're, we're, we're experimenting a little bit. We have an asphalt... Uh, recycler where we can take old mix that we mill off the roads in the summertime to pave with to pave with and store up some of that some of that material feed it back into this recycler wheel it out here and hopefully this works out good and it, it ends up giving us a permanent patch in the winter time they have been patching potholes in the winter time with hot mix this is this is a great idea Arle, Arlie's idea he's going to work through that uh, you'll see that you'll see that all over the place if it works out and it's economic. We're gonna we're gonna make a big difference. We all know about the Rock Creek project just up the road here. Uh, another big bold project, another big bold vision. That that's a that's some of the uh, most developable land in all of Southern West Virginia. But we have to have access to it, right? So that's what we're working on. This, uh, this was a great idea too. You know, Southern West Virginia paid the bills for this entire state for 100 years, for 100 years. And now it's time to see a little development down below Putnam County and Charleston and into Southern West Virginia. And that, this, is, this is a good project. This is what the, what's gonna help trigger that. You'll see some of that development. I think, uh, I, think, I think we're really ready to start seeing some hot asphalt I mentioned before by, by the 1st of April. Uh, these guys can't wait to get those plants open because they know Memorial Day's coming, right guys? Memorial Day's coming. The Rock Creek Interchange up there, you'll notice it's, it's going through its normal winter shutdown period. But they'll be back to work up there really soon. Uh, it looks like that's going to be, uh, We'll, have, we'll, we'll probably have that project completed late fall, early, or late summer, early fall of 2025. So, so the interchange up there will be ready for all that development to go on on that uh, remarkably developable piece of property up there on the mountain. I'm going to be here for a while. I'm going to be here as much as you guys will let me, and I'll, I want to talk to each and every one of you. I'd love to meet each and every one of you. But we have a full schedule of folks here today that want to talk to you, and I really want to, uh, to, to make you aware of the, the individual that, that, that's name bears that's born on this bridge, uh, a special, special West Virginian, just, just like most of us are. So uh, with that, Randy. It is indeed an, an honor and a pleasure to introduce this next gentleman, whom you all know, of course. He's, uh, he's local, but it's Commander Mayhorn from the Madison VFW Post 5578. Commander? Good afternoon. Uh, before I read this to tell you about the Medal of Honor, I'd like, like to make a few comments about Lieutenant Kyle. Uh, this bridge 
was named after him. Uh, the process got started by a gentleman from our post, Mr. Fred Duty. Uh, as Mr. Fred Duty told it, this gentleman uh, in World War II as a sergeant saved his life. Uh, Fred wouldn't talk too much about it except just give him details. Uh, I never did find out no more. But I will give you the, what it takes to get the Medal of Honor right here. So Medal of Honor is the United States highest award for military valor in action. And while over 150 years have passed since its inception, the meaning behind the medal has never tarnished. As with, within are the very values that each recipient displays in a moment that mattered. Bravery, courage, sacrifice, integrity, a deep love of country, and a desire to always do what's right. A distinguished award presented only to deserving, the model tells a story of its own. The criteria for this medal, the standard award and the Medal of Honor have evolved over time, but the medal has always stood for action that goes above and beyond. The current criteria was established in 1963 during the Vietnam War. The medal is authorized for military service members who distinguish themselves conspicuously in gallery and interpreted at the risk of his life above the call of duty. While engaged in action against the enemy of the United States, while engaged in a military operation involving conflict with an opposing force or force, foreign forces, or while serving with friendly forces, engaged in an armed conflict against an opposing army force in which the United States is not allegedly a party. All recommendations require thorough reports on the act itself, the battlefield and its settings, at least two sworn eyewitness statements, and any other compelling evidence that can be gathered. Recommendation packages must be approved all the way up the military command structure, ending with the United States President uh, as Commander-in-Chief. By federal statutes, a uh, recommendation for a medal must be submitted within three years of the Valor Act, and a medal must be presented within five years. Any submission outside of this timeline requires the act of a Congress waiver and time limit. Uh, I'd like to also say, once you read this story, if there ever was a true military hero, this gentleman fits the description. Thank you. Uh, this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Buddy Hudson, Mayor of Boone County, or Mayor of Madison. <laughs> It might as well be a big county. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. In a small town, when you shut down a, one of the access roads as a bridge, the businesses and everyone in town go haywire thinking of how are we going to travel in our city. I'd like to thank the Department of Highways and Triton for take, making this bridge a reality for the city of Madison because Brandon Mitch, uh, McClure, that was the foreman of this job, made it an easy project for the city of Madison. We, yes, we had some traffic problems the past seven, eight months, but Brandon M McClure from Triton really made it work for the city of Madison. We'd like to appreciate, we'd like to thank them a lot. That being said, several years ago we had a lady that's standing here beside me that was a is a former house of delegate member that was she was a, a, she worked a, real hard when the vfw decided they wanted to name this bridge she was a delegate at that time and at this, this moment i would like to present her and she's going to tell us a little bit about kyle dolores cook Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Indeed, it is a pleasure to be asked to participate in this wonderful day of rededication of a bridge here in our county seat of Boone County, Madison, West Virginia. 
I would like, and I don't have any authority at all, I'm not the mayor, I'm not on the council, but I would like to welcome each one of you here because this is a wonderful uh, group of people who have shown their interest in what dedication means, not only to our county and our state, but those that have served so diligently and have given their life for us that we could assemble ourselves here today and join together in this wonderful dedication. Some 20 years ago, I worked with Mr. Fred Duty, who was a member of the VFW, and I'd like to add that I also am a member of the VFW Women's Auxiliary and proud of that. But Fred Duty came to me and we were talking about dedicating this bridge to L Lieutenant uh, Darwin Kyle. I remember that there was a lot of work that took place but it was worth it all because at that time when we dedicated the original bridge near that area, we assembled ourselves and we had a wonderful little dedication. Well, something happened to that bridge and due to what Mr. Riston said, we got a new bridge. And I couldn't be happier. I don't live in Madison, but I live in Boone County. And I am proud of anything that takes place in Boone County because I've lived here all my life. And I'll bet there isn't a person here that could say what I'm going to say right now. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I have had the same address all of my life. I live at Ridgeview, West Virginia, out in the country, and I'm proud of it. Mr. Riston, I want to get to know you better because I think we have a lot of things that can be done here in Boone County. He mentioned the pilot program. I mentioned that to him before I got out of the car. So I think we're going to make progress. We're not done yet. We've got lots of work to do. But I didn't, I didn't, Mr. Dameron, I'm sorry, I didn't want to take up all of that time, but those were things that I have just said that were on my heart that I wanted to say. So right now, the rededication of the bridge, that's what we're here for. And what a wonderful day that God has given us with the wind and the sunshine and the fellowship that we're going to rededicate this bridge to a man called Lieutenant Darwin Keith Kyle. And I want to tell you a little bit about this gentleman. Medal of Honor recipient, recipient Darwin Keith Kyle, born June 1, 1918, deceased February the 16th, 1951, was born in Jenkins, Kentucky, and raised in Midway, Boone County. He enlisted in the Army in 1939. During World War II, he fought in France and Germany, earning both the silver and bronze stars. After his discharge in August 1945, Kyle returned to West Virginia. He re-enlisted in the Army in July 1947 and was assigned to the 6th Infantry Division in Korea as part of the Occupation Force. When the Korean War broke out in June 1950, Master Sergeant Kyle was assigned 
to the Fort Devens, Massachusetts in September 1950, Kyle's Unit, Company K, 7th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division, was sent to Korea. During the retreat at the port city of Hangnam in December 1950, Kyle was credited with moving injured men to safety while under gunfire. For his heroism and leadership abilities, Kyle received a battlefield promotion to second lieutenant in January 1951. On February 16, 1951, the new platoon leader was given orders to remove Chinese defenders from their position near Kamau Nia, northeast of Suwon. In an intense exchange between the American and Chinese forces, Kyle took out one emplacement with a grenade and killed the three-man crew. He killed four enemy soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand combat until he was shot and killed. Kyle was buried in Sunset Memorial Park in South Charleston on September the 27th, 1951. His widow, Betty Kyle, and two daughters received his posthumous Medal of Honor on January 16, 1952. A school in South Charleston was named in his honor in 1955 and in May 1996. A bridge at Madison was named the Lieutenant Darwin K. Kyle Memorial Bridge. And today we are rededicating this bridge to this wonderful, wonderful man. May you rest in peace. Thank you. Present arms.